Good morning everyone and welcome to our service. Uh, just some notices to draw your attention to. Our midweek uh, service, uh, it being Ash Wednesday, our midweek service, uh, we'll be looking at uh, your Father who sees from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 21. And that's uh, at 820 on Facebook and then later on, on Thursday, it'll be on YouTube. Our service next Sunday will be a service of Holy Communion and we'll continue to look at the plagues and God is faithful. And that will be from 10 to 11 on Facebook and then later on in the afternoon on YouTube. If you have any items for the food bank, if you want to uh, bring those to the rectory, then we'll make sure that they get to Enniskillen. And so we have our invitation to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Lord, direct our thoughts, help us to pray, and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and truth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, let us, let us worship. And begin ourselves by singing, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. And together we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that has passed, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for the Sunday before Lent. O God, our teacher and our judge, enrich our hearts with the goodness of your wisdom and renew us from within, that all our actions, all our thoughts, and all our words may bear the fruit of your transforming grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading is from Exodus chapter 8, verses 16 to 19, and chapter 9, verses 13 to 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike, strike the dust of the ground, and throughout the land of Egypt the dust will become gnats. They did this, and when Aaron stretched out his hand with the staff and struck the dust of the ground, Gnats came on people and animals. All the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats. But when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, they could not. Since the gnats were on people and animals everywhere, the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh, and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go, so that they may worship me. Or this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you, and against your officials and your people, so you may know there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that have wiped, would have wiped you off the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people and will not let them go. Therefore, at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt from the day it was founded till now. Give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in, your, in the field to a place of shelter, because the hail will fall on every person and animal that has not been brought in and is still out in the field, and they will die. Those officials of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord hurried to bring their slaves and their livestock inside. But those who ignored the word of the Lord left their slaves and livestock in the field. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing, Great is thy faithfulness.
Now Joanne is going to begin our all age talk. Last week we learned about baby Moses and how God kept him safe even when he was in a lot of danger. God was faithful to Moses and his family. Moses grew up to be a very important man who God used to lead his people. God's people were being treated as slaves in Egypt and they had cried out for God to rescue them. God had heard their cries and was going to keep the promise he made that he was going to bring his people safely out of slavery and out of Egypt. God spoke to Moses and sent him to ask Pharaoh to let his people go. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and he didn't fear God. So Pharaoh said, No! So God was going to use Moses to change Pharaoh's mind. God was going to send 10 plagues down on the Egyptian people. And today we're going to learn about the first six. So God told Moses to strike the river Nile with the staff and the water changed to blood. This meant that none of the Egyptians could wash in the river and they couldn't drink its water. The fish died and the smell was horrible. But Pharaoh still would not let God's people go. Pharaoh said, No. Because Pharaoh said no, God made frogs come up out of the water and cover all of Egypt. They were everywhere. Pharaoh told Moses to take away the frogs and he would let the Israelite people go and worship God. But when God took away the frogs, Pharaoh hardened his heart and wouldn't let God's people go. Pharaoh said, No. Next, God sent a plague of gnats, tiny flies that bite and itch. God turned the grains of sand on the ground into tiny, creepy, crawly gnats. There were so many of them that they covered all the Egyptian people and all the animals. Can you imagine how annoying it would be to have tiny flies crawling all over you and biting you? When Moses went to ask Pharaoh to let God's people go, Pharaoh refused to listen and he said, No. Then God sent a plague of flies. There were so many flies that the air was filled with black clouds of buzzing flies. When Pharaoh saw what had happened, he asked Moses to take away the flies and said that he would let God's people go. But when God took the flies away, Pharaoh was stubborn and still wouldn't let the people go. Pharaoh said, No. Because Pharaoh would not let the people go, Moses told him that God would make all the cattle very sick and that they would die. And that is exactly what happened. But when Moses asked if Pharaoh would let God's people go, he said, No. God told Moses to take some soot from the fire to go to Pharaoh and throw it into the air. When Moses did this, sore, oozy boils broke out on all the Egyptians. But still, Pharaoh refused to listen and he wouldn't let the people go. Pharaoh said, No. Pharaoh was pretty stubborn. He would not let the children of Israel, Moses' countrymen, women and children, leave Egypt. They were far too important to him. They were Pharaoh's slaves and they helped to build the amazing buildings and structures in Egypt. There was no way he was going to let them go. But the story doesn't end there. God still has another four plagues that he sends. I wonder what will happen next. Next week we will find out. Unfortunately, sometimes we harden our hearts just like Pharaoh. We sometimes are stubborn and do not want to be told what to do. We need to learn to listen to God, read our Bible and pray and try and see how we can live our lives for God, not against him. God had told Moses that he would harden Pharaoh's heart so that good would come out of the situation and all the people would see that God was God. You might be feeling sorry for the Israelites during these plagues, but God made sure that they were okay. The first three plagues affected all the people in Egypt, but after that, the Israelites were treated differently and they were kept from harm. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. Well, when we come to this passage, it's a passage that probably we're very familiar with. Uh, it's one of those ones, isn't it, that we do in Sunday school and uh, therefore 
when it comes to it, uh, there, we, we tend to know all of the different things that are going to happen. But it's important that we remember why all of this was happening. You see, the Israelites were in slavery and God had heard and he had seen their misery. He'd heard their cry and he was coming to set them free. But also, we know that God was coming against all the false gods in Egypt. We read that in Exodus 12, verse 12. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. And when you look at all of the plagues, all, each one of them was coming against a specific false god in Egypt. So with the blood, where did Moses find Pharaoh? Moses found Pharaoh worshipping a false god. He was going down to the Nile to worship this false god. The god was called Happy, and the god of the Nile Whenever the water turned to blood, that was a sign that that God was dead. That God was nothing in comparison to the Lord. Then we had frogs. The goddess of fertility had a head that was like a frog. And so you can imagine how the Egyptians would now regard that false god as they were plagued by frogs all over Egypt. Then the, the false god of the earth. Gnats came from the earth. And again, that sense of turning the, the Egyptians away from worshipping things that were false to worshipping the one true god. Each one of those were a sign to Pharaoh and to his people about who God is. The very first miracle that Moses did in Pharaoh's midst was to throw down a staff and it became a snake. If you've seen uh, pictures of Pharaoh, you often sort of see that there was a, uh, his headdress had a snake at the front of it. And it was a symbol of his authority. And so what do we see? We see Moses throwing down a staff and it turns into a snake. But then the interesting thing is that we see the Egyptian mag magicians doing the same things by their secret arts. But it doesn't stop there. Because what do we see? We see that then Moses' staff that had been turned into a snake eats the other snake. It was a sign that Moses, the God that he followed, the God that he worshipped, had authority over all things. That he is the God of gods, he's the Lord of lords, he's the King of kings. That there is no one like him, as he said to Pharaoh through Moses. That he had been raised for this very purpose, that he might display his glory, and that people would know that there is no one like him in all the earth. And so God was coming against all the false worship that there was in Egypt. How is it that then God was to show that he alone was God? We see that it's not until the third plague that then we see there's a difference in the magicians. Since the gnats were on people and animals everywhere, the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Now what was it that led them to believe that this was the finger of God? How was it that God was revealing himself as the one who was over all things? Well, the first thing is, do. Well, when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, they could not. They couldn't do it. And so that's what led them to believe that this was the finger of God. This was a power greater than their power. And that's why when they came to the, the staff turning to snake, they were able to do the blood coming from the Nile. They were able to, to turn uh, the water into blood. They were able to bring frogs out. But at this point, they couldn't do it. And so therefore, we see from the gnats onwards that all the rest of the plagues 
And these are the ones that they couldn't do anything about. When it came to the boils, they couldn't even stand before Moses because of the boils that they had over the body. They realized that this was gone. But then we see another thing, and it happens after, on, from the fourth plague onwards, God deals differently with his people. Up to that point, there was a sense that those first three plagues fell on God's people because God's people were slow to listen and to obey. When Moses came and when Moses spoke to the people, because of the fact that Pharaoh didn't act straight away and let them go, the people grumbled against Moses and against God. And so these first three plagues then come against all the people. But then to show that this wasn't some manipulation of the, the natural order, that your God was simply using things and it was just coincidence that happened, which is sometimes what you see. People will say that these things were coincidences. Now, if they were, well, how is it that there weren't any flies at all on the animals of the Israelites? And we find that time and time again from the fourth plague on, God deals differently with his people, as he says. But on that day I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there, so that you will know that I am the Lord, and I, the Lord, am in the land. You see, very different, isn't it? That we can see very clearly that it was a miracle when we see not a single fly being on any animals. For any of you who have been with livestock, you know what it's like. The, the, the cows are swashing their, their tail because they're trying to drive away the flies. Where there are animals, there are normally flies. This was a miracle from God. The last G is grace, if you've been following it, these G's, gods coming against the false gods. God, this is him. But then we see grace. When it came to, we've actually done one more um, plague than, than, than what we had said we would do. So this is the seventh plague, the plague of hail. We now see God's grace towards the Egyptians. He gives them a chance. He gives them an order. He says, give an order now to bring your livestock. This is what he's saying to Pharaoh and to his officials. Give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter. Well, what do we see? Those who feared, those of, of his official, the officials of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord, they acted quickly. They hurried to bring their slaves and their livestock inside. But what does it then go on to say? Those who ignored the word of the Lord didn't do it. And the result was that those who brought their livestock and their slaves in, they saw that God was faithful. They saw that when they listened and they obeyed the word of the Lord, they were under the same blessing that the Israelites were on. But those who ignored the word of the Lord, they saw that they had ignored the word of the Lord and therefore there was a result of that. Their slaves and their livestock died simply because they ignored the word of the Lord. And we see right throughout the scriptures, we see God being gracious even to those who are totally against them. He gives them a chance to repent, to turn around. We see that, don't we, when it comes to Jesus in the Last Supper. He gives an opportunity for the one who would betray him to actually stop and not go ahead with it. He lets him know that he knows what he's going to do, and yet he continues to do it. We see God who is gracious, but we see that God shows his power, and he desires to show his power through us, his people. And so we see that the same 
things that God has done in the Old Testament and the New Testament, God can do today. He can bring healing into people's lives, just as he did before. Now he does it through his church, his people. And he can show grace to people too. As we, his people, share the word of the Lord and as people respond to that and they see the result of that. That hopefully, just like we see in this story, when you read on in the story, we find that it's not just the Israelites who come out of Egypt, but there are Egyptians who come with them. The result of them seeing God coming against the false gods in Egypt was that they put their faith in the one true God. And the result of that was that they came out of Egypt with God's people. They became a part of God's people because they obeyed. Let's pray. Father, we do want to pray that you would help us, uh, your people, that we would, Lord, be reminded about how great you are, that there is no one like you in all the earth, that everything else that people may worship in this world is false and does not bring hope and does not bring life. You alone are the God who brings hope and life and joy and pleasure. Lord, we pray that you'd help us, your people, that we would show those around us who we trust in and who we have hope in. Even in the midst of trouble, we will not fall. Lord, we pray that you'd fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit and you'd equip us to be those who would be your hands and feet to bring people the good news about you. That we would use opportunities to show your miraculous power through healings and through other ways. That people around would know that you are in their midst. We ask this for your namesake and for your glory. Amen. We sing still, my soul be still.
we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe and trust in His Son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the church worldwide, that we may all be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. We pray for those in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace, especially remembering Jean and Florence. We say together, stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those in mourn, and hope to those in despair. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Safe in the Shadow of the Lord.
So we have our closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. For your love, make us servants of one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your world. Now let us say together, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Amen. So every blessing and Lorna and preachers are going to play us out.